It's Thursday, June 26th, 2 p.m., 2014, and I'm here at Porkfest number 11, where there is about to be a debate between a politico, Gigi Bowman, and Mr. James Babb, who happens to be taking my photo <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right. So uh, this is the place, right? What's going down? What's happened? This is the, the Bowman compound here. Yeah. Wow, the compound. Also, yeah. An internal checkpoint, and I need to know, are you an American right. citizen? Uh, Emma, I don't, uh, no, I'm not. Is well, that a problem? Sir, <laughs> um, staging area two, you can get free health care in school, so just uh, Oh, great, all right, that's good, very good. This is, think of this as the alt-alt expo. Uh, it's it's <laughs> the sub, sub, sub culture of, of pork fest. Yeah, let's get the full view. We've got, uh, ooh. Wait, you gotta get Gigi's uh, cupcake James pin. James Babb. Gigi. This is Kristen Megan, GMO free. Coffee and tea. Oh, this is good. The slash Tony yeah, Styles. You got you gotta get the button. Oh I'm, what? I'm oh my! I'm trying to make I'm trying to make freaking gray chili by five for the chili contest. Oh well, you're gonna win. I did my baking. Now I'm doing my chilling, and I'll do my cursing after that. <laughs> Are you gonna be debating? Oh, no, you're oh, busy I'm cooking. Debate. I'm a cooker. Okay. Who's moderating? He's got like this machete. I'll moderate. James moderate. Okay. He fired him. That's All right. why he has his moderation oh, outfit on. <laughs> you lose! You can, you can see he's the kind of guy you know that favors moderation. You know what the best part moderation. is? He's just There's nothing it's extreme, you know. Babs hair in this, uh... I got my eye on you, tiger. Ooh. Whatever, <laughs> Tim. The question is... I thought that was your military kid, too. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to now go from... I look like that. That's pretty funny. I'm making, no, I can't make, I'm making my own chili. Tiffany's making her chili. Alright, where is Tiffany? She's not, she's not. Someone's using it. Let's modern. That's the key. Chemtrip. Tell her to look at the sky. Are they real or not? Over. I have to tell Tiffany. Oh, how long are you here? Yes. I'm just going to tell you the theme of this is okay. chemtrails, real or imagined, okay? And you're going to have to pan into that view over there. Oh, what's that? What are we seeing? It's the sky, so that should be like... This is what the sky should look like right. on a good day. But it doesn't look that way where we live in Chicago and New York. Alright, he's about to down and he's going to moderate and I'm going to be talking to you. Sorry, thank you. Audience, Sorry, that sounded like volunteering yeah. to me. It's coming, there's a lot of people are coming. Alright, tell us where, where to be and what to do. Come and sit down for the debate, come on guys. You where are we going? We're going to do it out there on the street, the street debate. Oh, really? It's a street oh I love it. I like that. People have to sit. People have to sit. Street debate. How about we sit and people can stand around in the street and buy things? You are a lazy one. Sit down. Sorry, Violet. You are a lazy one. I mean, I knew it was going to be a low-budget production, but... This is live and unplugged. Okay. There's no seats like. for the debate. <laughs> this is, uh, behind. That's we should do it in the playground. You said I would have a, uh, a screen for my PowerPoint and my audiovisual presentation. <laughs> There's electric. Plug it in. <laughs> 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 we got money when we got our fireworks and everything. So it looks like the debate should be getting started shortly. I am looking forward to hearing what will be said on both sides. It looks like two hours has been slotted for this event. It is an informal event that is not listed in the schedule, but is something that captured my attention. Now there's a lot to compete with at Porkfest. There's a lot of other events that are happening in real tents. Uh, Matt Phillips, who recently ran for City Council in Bedford, New Hampshire will be speaking on the topic of something Bitcoin related, I believe. And uh, he's just brilliant, so something that I hope to catch the end of if this ends early. Plus, I might just go over there now, since this hasn't begun yet. There's so much happening at Porkfest all the time. I got my money on this guy, he's a little bit bigger. Yeah, but she's a painkiller, so, uh, you know. That's true. Yeah. I used to be a terrorist, I'm not anymore. I've only done it, you know, in a amateur way. So, you know, I'm sure it's awesome. My son wanted that too. I think that picnic table was awesome. He wanted to be a son. Yeah, that is.
I believe so. Not really cutting edge. Making the executive decision. Are we relocating? Yes. I could have brought chairs over. I didn't. I thought they were. You got chairs right here. You're going down the grass right here or something. Everybody's going down. Right here. What do you think? Just I feel like put we it right should here. do it while playing quicker. In there? Oh, okay. Oh, we're on a playground. It's so awesome. It's so meaningful. Wow, nice visual too for the sky. Yeah. And like, there's nobody gonna call that sky normal. Like that's, uh, you know, that's it's not what it looked like when I was a kid. <laughs> Getting this working out. Okay, so you want me to moderate? I've never moderated before. So. <laughs> you gonna straighten this all out? All right. Okay, where's it? Where, where, where is everybody? Where's the audience? I want this to be a clean fight. <laughs> there is no, no hitting below the belt. Hey, we gotta at least get Gigi out here pretending to be part of this. No, she doesn't. How do I look? We're too big. You to look fail. wonderful. Thanks. Thanks. I'm going for the off the shoulder look. I'm going for the Gigi Bowman attire. He's talking to me. Well, Just you do it. have a weapon on you, Just so, you know. I'm going to see if I can get the Bowman tent behind me here. I feel like I'm wearing my sunglasses, <laughs> not because I can't look in the eye, but it's bright. <laughs> I don't want to be looking bad on Bill. He's all sucking it in. I am sucking it in. <laughs> all right, sorry Once in my life, I have a collar. All right. So, the debate here is chemtrails. Are they real? Or imagined. Or imagined? Are they real or imagined? Now, how do? Who wants to go first here? Uh, I guess you're on. You're on the attack. Actually. Uh, well, no, I'm. I'm. She's saying something, and you're trying to disprove it. Oh, I haven't said anything yet, so I just think that it would be a courtesy to, <laughs> oh, okay. to let the lady Can we go have first. Give introductions first, maybe. Oh, oh well, that, people are oh, well then why don't you just moderate? So, mother, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> okay, get the fuck out of here. All right, then you do it. You'll no, be right. the muscle. Right. It's anarchy. Okay, that guy's got the gun. So no fucking around here. Okay, this is our debate. Chemtrails, real or not? On the pro side. It is Kristen, Chris, Megan. Kristen Megan in, in the playground. <laughs> I am here. And what is your experience, your background? Uh, my How background, did you come up around, around this topic? Well, um, I'm a senior industrial hygienist and environmental specialist, radiation safety officer. Basically, I do environmental health and safety. I've been doing it for almost 13 years. And uh, we got into this uh, conversation due to our differences in views. And uh, as we discuss this, you will see my background while in the U.S. Air Force, my involvement in my awakening through being a skeptic to understanding the history of stratospheric aerosol spraying by the government. Okay, and on the opposing side, the game's about. Well, I guess the sure. question is, are chemtrails real or imaginary? Well, water is a chemical, so a contrail is a chemtrail. So, so introduce so, yourself. Uh, Jim Babb. And how, and like, what's your Now, experience? unlike Megan, I don't expect anybody to believe what I have to say, because I've never worked for the government. So That's you, a good thing. you're going to just have to just, you know, decide for yourself if I'm trustworthy. Um, I have no particular skills or training that qualify me to talk about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Always a good call. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my position uh, is I, I, technically I don't know. I have yet to see convincing evidence. I, I don't. I can't say yes or no. There's something besides water vapor up there. If there is, I just haven't seen the evidence yet. And uh, like many other people. We're just saying, hey, show me the evidence. It sounds like an extraordinary claim. It should be a single piece of evidence that we should be able to look at, and unfortunately there hasn't been. So, um, and the only reason I would even engage in this conversation is to just sort of, um, you know, if somebody's on the fence and maybe haven't really thought that, gosh, they really should look into it because there's so much bullshit out there. God, uh, I mean, it's just endless. And, and I care a lot about the people that are, that are supporting this. Um, mythology and I, I really feel it's detrimental to them and because they're friends you know like if you saw a friend with like food in his beard you'd say something you know mm -hmm. so I feel I need to you know occasionally say something to try to help people from kind of going down that path so I guess um, I'll say imagine okay Christy first of well um, chemtrail is actually the term that was coined by a I guess just the general public because they're saying chemicals are in trails 
in the sky. Um, scientifically, it's called stratospheric aerosol spraying. Um, I used to have the same view. I actually thought it was a load of crap. I thought it was insane. I thought if I worked in this career field, why would the government hire me to protect the people and then turn around and do something? Um, what's lost in translation as we get into it is why it's happening. And that is not what I'm going to discuss because I only have what my experience is. And I have theories, but I'll stick to facts. When you say facts. it's happening, you need to be a little more specific. It is happening. What is happening? What is happening is there's a program that is involved in the UN. Of course, the US is a partner in the UN. Mm -hmm. And it's a program called geoengineering. Now, in geoengineering, it is not just chemtrails, which actually is called stratospheric aerosol spraying, which is any any small particulates that are sprayed mm -hmm. in the atmosphere. Um, like I said, there's just one provision of geoengineering, but it's the most popular, and that's why people call it chemtrails. What they do is they use small, which is nanoparticulate metals, because you hear all the government talking about global warming and global warming this and selling carbon taxes. What they're not telling you is that they're using small particulates of reflective metals mm -hmm. to help reflect... What are those metals? Uh, aluminum. Aluminum, barium, strontium. Um, that is what I know because of my experience in the Air Force. I have heard other things, but I will not speak to those because I only speak to what I have personally seen. Um, so when we see what looks like what I might call a contrail, you're saying that's barium and aluminum. Not always, and that is what is wrong with... Okay, most of the time? Um, I will not give a percentage Some of the on. time? Uh, yeah. Just, I'm running this to be here. Well, Maybe just, just, answer. Just, just, cause, just so we know what we're even discussing. Uh, no, I well, understand. let her finish. You know, like, let her get her explanation the, out. And yeah, then just, I'm asking you to just, just be clear when you use the terms So like I can't that. give it a percentage, but I will tell you this. There are people who... Uh, say that every trail in the sky is a chemtrail. That is that is false. We all know that there's condensation trails. We know dependent on altitude, weather conditions, different types of fuel that is used. You're gonna get you're gonna get trails, and not all of them have spring like nanoparticulate metals. That is that is the biggest turnoff to people that pushes them away. Um, the what needs to be understood is the difference. Mm -hmm. And people like looks like you have a multi-zoom lens. If you were to do times lap recording in your sky and you are paying attention to weather patterns, you can most likely determine what is a chemtrail based on comparing flights with their altitude, knowing the weather conditions, understanding dissipation rates and chemical weights. Mm. It's more like science-based, but if you understand that... And can measure the, uh, the altitude, the temperature, the pressure, the mm. humidity, right. and you're aware of these things, then you can determine you're that. You're gonna get your chance to respond. <laughs> No, because I think we actually do agree on a lot of things, and that's why I'm, I'm glad that we can have this, this debate here, because um, you lose, you turn people like Mr. Bab off by saying that every trail is, a, is, a, is a, right. it's not, it is not. Um, people ask most often why, and if this is happening, why are they doing it? And the number one way to turn people off is to say they're trying to kill us. But I'm still not clear on when you say why they're doing it. You haven't really nailed down what they're, they're the what, United what, Nations. No, what are they doing. You're saying, well, it might be some of this, but I'm not going to say it's more than one in a billion or 99%. I don't, when you say we need to talk about why they're doing weather, this, you're weather. not saying what this is. What this is, is this? Weather that you're manipulation. About? Okay. That is using magnetic particles and utilizing to if they want to control uh, the weather wait, steer the weather magnetic particles yes they're magnetized okay and that's barium and aluminum yes because there are also other constituents a lot of people get confused by thinking aluminum like aluminum that is naturally occurring in the earth and you have to understand that these are altered in an industrial setting and that's how they're able to do it in that nanoparticulate almost like a powder or aerosol mm -hmm. but the purpose that i know from my experience with the air force behind it is for weather modification right. and one thing that is important to remember is if you think it's completely false and it's not happening or it's imagined is looking at the history and that is our government meaning that united states air force and navy for the past 30 years has been using what's called military chaff, which back in the day, before the EPA labeled it a carcinogen. But I just want to just try to keep it focused. Okay. Military chaff yes. has nothing to do with this topic of whether chemtrails are real or it not. Is. Uh, it but is. Leather, she's obviously. I don't really just. I mean, you could just go on and pontificate from thing to thing to thing. But I think we're trying to let's get some some let's talk but, about some specifics. But the problem is people who don't understand this issue. It's understanding the history. It's understanding there has to be a context. Okay, well let me just. Can't come out and just may say, I interject for a, they, it's Let me just, just, let me just interject for a moment then, if I can, at this point, because a lot of things that keep getting said and. Um, this isn't going to have any meaning to anybody if, we're, if people don't even know what's being discussed, okay? We're, what the question is, are chemtrails real or imaginary? 
Chemtrails are those things that most people think are contrails. She says contain, sometimes contain barium and aluminum. Okay, so I'd like to focus our discussion on that phenomenon. There's a whole range of things that go on in the atmosphere. Radar chaff, cloud seeding, um, you know, trying att uh, attempts to weaponize the weather for military advantage. These things are well known and well understood and not debated, okay? We don't need to talk about, there's no reason to bring up radar chaff because that's has a specifically known purpose and is well understood. You sprinkle little flakes of, a, of aluminum and it throws off radar. That has nothing to do with geoengineering. It has nothing to do with any of that. So I don't see but any I feel reason. It does. To, well, the reason I, I, you hear people like um, G. Edward Griffin bring it up in his movie, to, to me it's, it's, it's almost, or I would say it's, it's dishonest, intentional or not, I don't know. But when you say, well, Look, even a guy on TV is mentioning radar chaff. Therefore, chemtrails. It's a complete leap from, from one topic to the next. So uh, I'm not going to debate whether radar chaff is real or sounding rockets or uh, all of this well-understood phenomenon that's been around as long as people have been able to shoot a well, rocket into a cloud. Well, from what I heard her saying, she wasn't saying that radar chaff is part of geoengineering chemtrails or any I'm part of it, except I'm in explaining context. The, the relevance and the capability to stratospherically spray. Uh, and, if you, and if you understand that our government at one point sprayed lead upon us and currently sprays silica and polymers, which call silicosis, on us without informed consent, it's understanding the capability. You mentioned earlier that concrete evidence. And there's a lot of pressure on people in the community who are involved in it. And I, under, and I understand that 100%. But my only purpose in bringing that up is to establish if we've done A, B, and C, why is it so difficult to understand D? Well, and, look, and it's okay, relevant. we're not going to debate whether the government's evil enough to do something. Okay, that's ridiculous. They drop nuclear bombs on children. Right. Okay, they put give syphilis to people on purpose. That is not a question. Okay, just to say, well, gosh, the government's so evil, I can imagine X. That is not a proof in any way. That has no bearing really on this conversation. No one's going to deny what evil the government's cap government employees are capable of doing. So the question is, are these things in the sky? Is it water vapor or water crystals or is it barium and aluminum? And everybody's looked for proof, 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 and there's never been a single, single bit of proof ever to the extent that even the founder of California Skywatch, when they asked her, like, hey, how come you're not in on these lawsuits? And uh, let me see if I can, I don't know if you know this woman, Rosalind Peterson? Yes, I know. I've heard of her. Okay, she's really respected in this field, my, under my understanding. She she says, I don't have the documentation. I don't have a single study. I don't have a single solitary evidence that jets are releasing chemicals on the unsuspecting populace. Okay, now that's the woman who founded California Skywatch and is still in the profession of protecting agri agriculture from uh, pollutants. She comes out and says, guys, there's just no proof. Um, so, um, you know, I think that if you want to make an extraordinary claim that that's burying aluminum, I think some kind of evidence needs to be put forth, and it never has. Well, the and evidence... it's embarrassing for people well, to actually, keep what, promoting this okay. without any evidence at all. Wait, wait, well, wait. I personally, I'd like to say something. I personally have put my, my professional reputation on the line. If I wanted to be well known, this is definitely not how I would have chose to be. Um, I can tell you that part of my job in the Air Force, as you probably have heard, was to approve, part of my job was to approve hazardous materials. And I saw these materials coming into canisters, going into the classified portion of the AWACS hangar at an Air Force base that I was at. And when I brought it up and raised questions and did an investigation, I was reprised, chastised, and stripped of my duties. So mm -hmm. the government d is doing something with some chemicals and you don't know what it is. No, I, I Therefore, did. it's coming out of a nozzle of a plane. I mean, no, I, I did ask the questions and I was told to basically shut up in color and... Well, how do you go from that to saying, well, since I don't know what these are for, therefore it's being squirted out no, of no, a plane No, 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 I nozzle. do. I, I know what it is for. What I'm saying well, what's is... What's it for? It is for weather modification. Okay, well, what as we know, is weather to... modification is a well-known right. phenomenon and that is, exactly... has not related to, to the, what we're discussing here it is. is whether contrails are contrails. Contrails are used for weather, weather modification. My reference is saying, I won't talk about other reasons because there are beliefs about eugenics and Monsanto seeds. That is based on theory. I speak about what I know and right. what I have fought in courts and what I've dealt with. And I'm telling you, my job in the Air Force was to prove that those materials and a lot of the information 
we are not told why, but when I had originally heard about this, I thought it was a complete conspiracy theory. It actually offended me because it counteracted what my job was. And when I confronted my high-ranking superiors, that is when I faced reprimand and reprisal. And that is why I have whistleblower protection, and that is why I still have court cases ongoing. Mm -hmm. So Related to chemtrails? Uh, actually, four different issues, yes. Okay. Because of my position in the government, I have stumbled upon multiple things that would... Enrage the public. Okay. okay. Well, would you care to have? Would you care to cite? Okay. You've, you've got a strong belief. Okay. Uh, what do you say to people that say, um, "May I see some evidence, please"? You can go do a freedom of information. Uh, no, act. no, no. I'm not going to do no, a freedom of information that's where it search. Is. It's I'm, on an Air no, Force I'm just form saying. Thirty-nine fifty-two. Show me how come all of this. You know, like thousands and thousands of people are out there posting crap about this on my Facebook page, right. and not one who says, "Oh, look, here's actually somebody measured it." Um, I've measured it multiple times, but okay, I, I so know you've, personally. So you've measured what? I have, I've done atmospheric testing. I have done soil sampling. So you went up behind the plane in another plane and captured the, that that no, trail. No, I, I did. It? I did plotting, and I have a high volume a high volume air sampler called the Stapleix. Okay, so you took an air sample. Right. Well, now um, I guess, and you and found rain, and you found and what soil. in the air sample? Uh, I found high high levels of actually arsenic, okay. aluminum, barium, strontium. There was some plastic polymers in there, but you have to know you have to know the okay, area so that you're in. Okay, so there's a lot of crazy stuff in there. Now, that are where above do you? EPA um, where's your proof that that came out of a plane? My proof I is. I see smokestacks right. going down all the road, going down the road all the time. I hear about environmental pollution on a major scale. No, you know, all out in the open. I can see a smokestack belching crap. That I don't need to have a wild theory to explain. Why should I say? You know what? You know, it's not that smokestack which I can see and smell with my own eyes. I now have to say, well, it's in the air, therefore, cloud that cl came from that cloud over there. It Do you is, realize what a ridiculous leap that of, of, of logic that is? I understand how ridiculous that is if somebody doesn't have the background in doing atmospheric testing. And that's what I can speak to. And I no, understand. How do you test do air I'm and then say it's from a plane? You. I, you can test air. How I'm do you say, I've tested the air, and therefore, it came out of that plane? Well, that's what I'm trying to answer And it doesn't you. matter what your, your training is. <coughs> Wait, is it? it does, you. because if Jeez. you take a soil sample and don't understand background and what's naturally occurring in the earth, and you don't have to know how to analyze and ask for certain uh, methods of testing, it does. So this is when my background... Oh, it tells you what's in the ground or in the air, no. right? You have to know, you can't just send something to a lab. You have to know what to ask for, what methodology. You have to know the background of your area. You have to get documents, and you have to have what is called a blank sample. But to answer your question as far as how do I know it's from this or that, it's understanding what does it look like now, time-lapse filming, understanding the dissipation rates with current weather conditions and weather pressure and barometric pressure and WBGT readings. It's all relevant to understand the dissipation rate and where it would go. You can't just wave the sky. It could have been from the truck exhaust. So you're saying when you take an air sample, you don't know where those pollutants came from? No, I'm plotting the weather direction. That's that's what my job is. That's what I was trying okay, to do. Okay, first off, years. first off, Balti, wait, James, you said yourself, you have no special training in any such field like she is. Right. So you're asking for proof. A, what would that proof be? And B, since you yourself said okay. you have no training in this kind of thing, only how would you even? Okay. Well, well, a, pr a proof. Okay, proof. Um, okay, I'm going to throw out a, a, a freebie to all the chemtrail advocates out there. Okay, mm -hmm. and here's an experiment that anybody can do. Okay, spectroscopic analysis. You point a telescope at that trail, you measure the light passing through, and you get an absorption spectrum that shows you every element in that trail. This is uh, for the, for much less than the cost of the next G. Edward Griffin documentary. Some folks at a university could get access to the equipment and do it. Okay, but that's actual measurement that's repeatable, that's peer reviewable. That's why you don't see that. What you see is, dude, look at the sky. Gosh, man, dude, that was like that when I was a kid, man, dude. And and the crap of people saying, well, you know that contrails dissipate, chemtrails don't. Crap, total crap. You know, saying because uh, saying well, it I has to be that way. That. You've got you. you've got atmospheric pressure, you've got humidity levels, you've got uh, temperatures, you know, winds. Everything has a factor on that. And and for people to say, well, it didn't dissipate, therefore I know these people are making fools of themselves. And that's what? the only reason I even want to try to help them. It's like, gosh, you know, just like show some da basic reasoning skills. You know, she she says, um, you know, she can go on about these tests, but. 
I don't need to be a scientist to, to establish that floating in the air doesn't mean it came from that plane. I don't care, you that's know, hazard I don't care how much that's training. A, that's a, that is an actual That's just, method. you try to throw out jargon words in a <laughs> word not, salad and, not, and try to a, call that an argument. No, and, actually, and I, don't fall I, for I haven't. And because my, I could throw out a lot of acronyms. I'm not trying to do that. I am, hazard plotting is used in emergency management. It's used in hazard environmental Hazard plotting emergency. doesn't say this can't, got to the ground from that plane it does, nozzle. because. It, that's in, ridiculous. Does anybody, can anybody imagine how that works? Do you know what hazard plotting is? A lot of people is? in the military. That's, Some people in the military understand it, but does anybody here see, oh, I found it in the dirt, therefore chemtrails? Can no, somebody no, just... No, that, that's not what she's saying. She's saying she's taking air sampling, and there's a certain wind direction in one particular day. That's how they do like weather okay, forecasting. They okay. How okay. That's how they well, James, right. one thing I, I agree with Volumetric you on... Movement. Well, which, let, let me ask you this. Which, which planes are they that are, that are uh, spraying the uh, barium and aluminum? That I know, there could be more. What I know was KC 130s and, and uh, KC 135s. Okay, and and, and at what altitude? And at what altitude? Uh, I can't tell you the altitude. Okay. Because each one has different missions, and they would include this in their missions. So. Well, um, you know, it's interesting that um, you should probably get in touch with G. Edward Griffin. I. Have He's basically calling you a liar. I've met him, and we've okay. had. Well, because he, he has made it clear based on his detailed studies of what he describes, and I, I don't know the specifics, but he seems to have studied all plane movements and chemtrail sightings and correlated to him conclusively that the chemtrails are being sprayed out of commercial planes with passengers flying at normal commercial altitudes. So you should probably get with him so he's not, you know, whatever evidence you have, Maybe you need to share that with him because he has made, he has, he, he, he has concluded that. Well, what, and you, wait, I, I would wait, like wait. to be able to talk hold for hold a it, moment. Hold it. One, there's one problem with your argument there. Did you just like 15 minutes ago say G.R. Griffin didn't know what he was talking about? Well, I'm just... I'm, well, you said maybe he didn't know what he, he's no, he, he he's saying saying you, he was talking about. But now you're just saying you know. I'm just saying what he his said. Research no, I'm just saying... Against no, I'm not well, saying that. Like, like okay, now respond. let me finish, but first I have to get to respond to the moderator. I did not say I agree with what G. Edward Griffin just said. I'm just telling you what he said. I don't think there's chemtrails coming out of the back of airlines. I'm just letting you know this is his statement in the field. And that's what his public statement... I'm not defending him or <laughs> saying his view is mine. So, yes, I'm not a big fan of G. Edward Griffin. Um, you know, he found Noah's Ark. Then he's working on chemtrails. That, you know, it's like, <laughs> he's not my guy, okay? Well, one thing that I feel is uh, is I should not be compared to anybody else that is speaking to it. I've actually, I wouldn't say disassociated. I've moved away from a lot of the people who are trying to expose this because of their, I don't want to I don't want to say fear-mongering, but their lack of information. Like... People are saying it's added to jet fuel. People are saying that every trail, I will only speak what I have evidence of. Could commercial planes you, be doing it? You use it? this word evidence. Yes. Again, you when you say, I have evidence, then you yes. say, go do some Freedom of Information Act to find my evidence. So what if, is the evidence? If a crime was committed here and your blood is here, would I not have evidence that you were here? Okay. So Even though there's no documentation saying that okay. you, you signed it where right is here? Your, where is your study? My stuff Where's is, your research? I have tons of research. Why can't you get it to that woman from California Skywatch that, I, that doesn't have you know it? What, you know what I spend my time doing? Obviously, I'm enjoying my time here. I spend my time making people in my profession aware because people in my profession, we are the ones that are, are supposed to stop this kind of stuff. And if other people in my profession know what's going on and they do their own testing that they're trained to do, they will throw that flag up and say, we are not going to accept this. And then maybe they'll start being cited. And OSHA won't be afraid. And the EPA won't be afraid. Why would you publish your, publish your study? That you say I is evidence? I am in the middle of a court case. Okay, what I'm just saying is, you know, we could say, you know, um, you're just making these broad assertions, basically. But, but we, that, we all that agree. Is, that we said, look, opinion. here's some evidence. And you say, well, I have evidence, my but evidence I can't talk is, about it. Uh, and my Knowing my background, my it's testimony. It's not your background. That is not evidence. Let's Could just I talk reply, about. Though? No, wait a minute. Let's because talk I feel about. Like I'm not wait, able to let's talk about what evidence is. Oh. Evidence is like this is a study. I took samples. I measured it. These are the results. Here's the original data. Here's where I did it. This is what time it was done. Peers can review it. They can do the same experiment but I later. I disagree with you about peer review. 
I'm 100%. just saying, you're not. If you don't even publish anything, what it to me I that have, says is I'm making bold assertions. I have, I have I'm making bold assertions, and I have no evidence to back it up. I do. As none of these chemtrail I do have uh, people do. But you saying you have evidence is no, not the I, same I as have here's the evidence. I have presented my studies. I have presented my evidence, and that is how I got whistleblower protection. So. So you're. Wait a minute. You have uh, whistleblower protection for your studies.